What's up, everybody, and welcome into this edition of the Rebel Report. My name is Michael Borky. Glad that you are with me. So, obviously, we're not going to be live tonight. Hey, Dad and I will be uh, doing the radio show in Tupelo today. So, uh, you know, I'd be getting back after 9 o'clock tonight. So, recorded edition of the podcast. Again, sorry for missing live streams this week. Had to do pre recorded stuff on Tuesday and having to do pre-recorded stuff today. We'll be back live stream, regular scheduled on Sunday, and then continue on moving forward. It just uh, so happened to work out that way this week. But I'm glad you're here. Don't forget to like the video, uh, leave a comment. I read the comments after the fact uh, and engage with them. So please uh, do both of those things. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast if you're watching or listening on YouTube, uh, on Super Talks YouTube as well, or... Uh, if you just haven't subscribed yet, you should. Search Rebel Report wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe and leave a rating and a review. So today, a couple of things. We're talking recruiting. Ole Miss got some big news and it is anticipated they're going to get a lot more big news. And then your who to root for or against this weekend in college football to help bolster Ole Miss's college football playoff Chances. So we're doing that today on this edition of the Rebel Report, which is presented by the Gregory Law Firm. DJ Gregory of the Gregory Law Firm, no longer in Saltillo, Mississippi. He's in Fulton now, but still same great service for all of your personal injury, small business, or contract disputes. So if you're a small business owner and you haven't needed legal advice yet, that day may come. 662-397-9799 is the phone number. Save it. If you don't need him today, you might need him down the road. If you have been personally injured, don't wait another second. If you've been personally injured, you need to call DJ Gregory right now of the Gregory Law Firm, or if you have a contract dispute, he can help you out as well. He can service you anywhere in Mississippi, and if you don't need him today, you don't want to be left out in the cold not knowing where to go when something like that happens to you. 662 397 9799. That's the phone number. 662 662- Three nine seven nine seven nine nine. Don't delay. Call DJ today in the Gregory Law Firm. So Caleb Cunningham uh, officially announced his flip to Ole Miss uh, yesterday. It happened just yesterday. The uh, wide receiver from Choctaw County, uh, Ackerman, Mississippi. He's what six one one ninety. Has been a highly coveted prospect. He's been talked about a lot around here. You know, we don't cover recruiting all that much here on, on this podcast or, or on the, the, the streams or these videos, in part because I think if you're going to cover recruiting, you've got to do it all. I mean, you, you've got to really cover recruiting if you're going to do it the right way. But this is a, a little bit different, obviously. And uh, I think what's happening now between him and then if a couple of flips happen that are being projected to happen... Uh, Ole Miss is doing something that they haven't done well enough in the Kiffin era, uh, at least in my opinion and a lot of others' opinions as well. But it seems like uh, they are doing so now. But either way, Caleb Cunningham flips from Alabama to Ole Miss. He was at the Georgia game. It, it's been trending Ole Miss's way uh, for a while now. And then uh, we got a little extra bit of news that initially he wasn't going to sign until February. Sounds like that has changed. And he is now uh, going to be a December signee, which is a, a very positive and good thing for Ole Miss. So he's a five-star. Uh, I mean, depending on the service you look at, he's the number one player uh, in the country, or excuse me, number one player in Mississippi, number two wide receiver uh, in the country, a top 20 national player. I mean, this is a really high-level player. There, there's no doubt about it. And getting him to flip from Alabama is huge for a couple of reasons. Obviously, you get a great player, and, and you get to do the you get to flex your muscle a little bit around the SEC that not only is Ole Miss able to get high-level portal players, but here they are going toe-to-toe with Alabama again, you know, like they did with Centarian Perkins, for example, in taking Cunningham from them. Uh, I know there is some talk, you know, going into the season that, you know, Mississippi State would have a real shot if they showed something, uh, you know, showed some positive progress and, uh, very clearly, that has not happened, and so it came down to Ole Miss in Alabama, and it sounds like Ole Miss has um, not only got his flip, but it sounds like it's a very hard commitment. Never believe anything uh, fully until pen meets paper, but it sounds like this uh, this flip was a long time coming, and Ole Miss has uh, crossed their T's and dotted their I's to make sure that this one um, is is done. Uh, the wide receiver room next year, and this is going to be kind of a theme uh, that we'll start talking about over the next few weeks, but starting today, after this season, 
there's been a lot of talk from myself included that Ole Miss is going to have to kind of have a complete rebuild. And while, yes, they will have to rebuild, they are losing a, a, a ton of guys. That is obvious. Quarterback, wide receivers, all that. I mean, they're, they're losing a lot. But what remains is increasingly less, is stressful the right word? Uh, it is very clear that what Ole Miss will have returning is certainly useful. The aforementioned Centarian Perkins uh, on defense. Uh, I mean, Daughtery at linebacker, for example. You've got Xavier Harris and Jam Brown on the defensive line. And the, the four blue-chip prospects they signed on the defensive line in last year's recruiting class all returning. You, you've When you look around, it's like, hey, there's a lot of pieces here. Now on offense, you saw what Austin Simmons did in the Georgia game at quarterback. And now suddenly you've got... Caden Lee, who's emerged as a star, and now Daquan Wright, that tight end, has emerged as a star, and now you add in somebody like Cunningham, which most people think is a plug-and-play, like day one starter-type wide receiver talent, and you look around this Ole Miss team, and they're not even, they haven't even started the portal recruiting yet, and yes, there is certainly a, a rebuild, there's no doubt about that, but the rebuild looks less daunting lately with some performances on the field of guys that are going to return. And now they're picking up a five-star wide receiver that that is, that is big time. So not only is this just a big get to get the number one player in the state to fight off uh, Alabama, to, to flip him back to Ole Miss, but what a guy like him can mean for the immediate future. I mean, 2025 for Ole Miss, it just looks far less daunting than it did, you know, just a few months ago from what they were going to have to lose. So uh, a big pickup there. There's also some reporting uh, that that Deuce Knight, the quarterback from George County, who is currently an Auburn commit, is on his way to flip to Ole Miss. That has not happened as of this recording, uh, but there's been a lot of momentum uh, for that to be the case. Um, look, I mean, it, it's kind of a no-brainer right now. I, I'm not ta- it's, it's just obvious. W- who would you rather play for as a quarterback right now, Lane Kiffin or Hugh Freeze? I mean, who would you rather play for? It's abundantly clear that that answer is Lane Kiffin. Uh, he's a, a four-star on 24-7. He's a five-star on other services. Uh, the number two player in Mississippi. He's a top 10 quarterback prospect. Uh, big kid, too. Uh, so a really high-level uh, prospect on top of everything else. But uh, if that comes to fruition, which, again, hasn't happened as of this recording, but maybe uh, it will by the end of the day, it's just more increased momentum you get to stick it to Hugh Freeze and and Auburn and that quarterback room suddenly with what they'll have with Simmons coming back and and not even just if they're able to get Knight but the quarterback room looks really healthy going into next year if they're able to pull this off and and there's even more including uh Steve uh Wiltfong of on three has predicted that Ole Miss is going to flip a blue chip Louisiana offensive lineman, uh, Devin Harper, currently committed to LSU, uh, projected to, or at least according to, to Wilt Fong, who does not do these things uh, unless he, he's got some really solid information. He does not just throw stuff on the wall and hope it sticks. Um, but that is a blue chip four star offensive lineman from Louisiana flipping to LSU, uh, flipping from LSU to Ole Miss. And if that happens, that would be massive for a couple of reasons. They need offensive line help, and then going into Louisiana and taking a LSU commit uh, is um, so, some big muscle flexing. And what if they're able to close this, right? It hasn't happened yet. Two of the guys I just mentioned haven't even actually uh, flipped, as uh, even though they are predicted, they haven't done it yet. But what is happening now, at least what I think is happening, is you're starting to see Ole Miss under Lane Kiffin capture momentum from wins on the field into high school recruiting. Now, we've talked about it a lot. I think their portal strategy, people question the sustainability. Clearly, it's it's sustainable. They're on the verge of winning 10 games for the third time in four years. Uh, that, that is, I mean, the definition of sustainability. But they still can and have had the opportunities to capture momentum and build also through high school to where they can balance it out a little bit more to where they can go get the portal guys that they can get, like Chris Paul, who's had a phenomenal season, and Princely, who's had a, a, a phenomenal season, and, and on and on. But they can still build a foundation, especially on the lines of scrimmage, but they can still build a foundation through high school 
and they are now seemingly capturing the momentum of that. Last year's recruiting class was a top 20 class, and I mentioned a second ago they had four blue-chip defensive linemen in that class. And now you're talking about quarterback, five-star wide receiver, and now suddenly they're in on uh, some blue-chip linemen as well, building foundation so they can still be aggressive in the portal like they have been, and their portal evaluations have been outstanding, but now they can, they, they have seemingly uh, figured out that they are now able to do both, and that is a big, big deal for Ole Miss in, in roster building uh, on an even more sustainable level. Again, I think their strategy has been sustainable because they've gotten to this point and they've had the success they've had over the last four years for a reason. But now that they're able to seemingly get blue chip prospects uh, via all means instead of mostly through portal is a, a significant development for the future of the program and not just for building a team each year. So this is really significant momentum for Ole Miss. They're capturing the wins on the field with turning that into uh, recruiting. And then the portal is going to open next month. And you know, it's going to be a very attractive portal destination with spots that need to be filled. So a lot of really good things happening right now for Ole Miss in the, uh, in the roster building front, especially with the, uh, the, the bye week um, you know, being now so they can focus mostly on this and as the news comes uh, we will definitely talk about it we'll get to the uh, rooting guide after I tell you the podcast is brought to you uh, in part by Advantage Business Systems check them out online at absms.com Advantage Business Systems has you covered for all of your Mississippi office technology needs tell them I sent you you'll get a complimentary office technology assessment so you tell them what you need whether it's copiers and printers and mail machines cloud storage data security whatever it is if you need Technology in the office, and you're in Mississippi. Check them out, absms.com. And again, tell them I sent you. The podcast is also brought to you in part by Priority One Bank. Let them make you their priority. We've got 16 locations here in Mississippi, so there's very likely to be one in your backyard. They make you their priority every single day with local loan servicing and decision making. You don't have to talk to somebody on Zoom or out of state to get a loan, or if you have a loan through them, to get it serviced. Their online banking platform is so simple and so easy. You don't need multiple apps. You just need an internet connection, and you can do whatever it is that you need to do with your money because Priority One Bank makes you their priority. All right, this weekend, who to root for, who to root against, uh, and I'm going to do this every weekend for the rest of the season. Um, I think, you know, this game has a big spread. This one's probably not on your radar, but I think in general you need to root for Ohio State, more specifically next weekend. But obviously, you know, slipping up against Northwestern uh, has no real bearing on what I think needs to happen next weekend, but I think you want to root for Ohio State, especially when Indiana comes because of Ohio State, especially if they beat Indiana comfortably, if they beat them soundly. A 10-2 and Ole Miss with wins over Georgia and South Carolina, a ranked now South Carolina on the road, um, would get in over 11-1 and Indiana. Maybe I'm wrong. We have no idea that the committee uh, gives mixed messaging on their rationale but I do think that Ole Miss would have a better claim to a spot than that of an 11-1 and Indiana. So root for Ohio State. To me, root against Texas, against Arkansas this weekend for two reasons. That Arkansas win for Ole Miss would look better uh, than it currently does. And remember, Ole Miss went up there and absolutely beat the brakes off of Arkansas. But Texas's resume to me is a joke. And I know that you have to consider helmet bias and, and things like that because, again, the committee... They have displayed inconsistencies. Their their messaging about what they what they think that they should do is or, or why they've done what they've done is is mixed. It's inconsistent. I have no faith in in a room full of suits uh, to get this right. Although there are some former coaches on the committee, so maybe that helps some. But Texas's resume is awful. Their best win currently is Vanderbilt. That is their best win, and then after that, it's a five and five Michigan. And their their strength of schedule is bad. Quite frankly, I think that Texas can lose to Arkansas and can lose to Texas A&M. It would be better if they lost them both, in my opinion. Their resume is bad. They don't belong where they are. Um, some people would say root for Texas to win out just to stay where they are ahead of Ole Miss. Um, I, I'm not totally convinced. Um, I, I think that... To, I, I understand the argument, but I, I do think that Texas losing to Arkansas... 
even with the helmet bias factor, uh, there just there would be nothing on their resume that would set them uh, ahead of Ole Miss other than helmet bias. So maybe, maybe that's the counter argument is you want to keep Texas where they are uh, to avoid that. But their resume is absolutely awful, and a loss to Arkansas should eliminate them basically. But who knows? Maybe it won't. Root against Penn State. I mean, they're not going to lose this weekend, but they're they're at Purdue. They're twenty eight and a half point favorites. That's another team with a resume that is just simply not comparable to Ole Miss's. What is their best win? Penn State's best win is West Virginia. Maybe Southern Cal in overtime, who is now a bad Southern Cal team. Um, That's all they've got. And so root against Penn State, even though it doesn't seem likely this weekend. Root against Notre Dame. They've got Virginia, Army, and uh, Southern Cal to end the season. They're big favorites this weekend. If they get another loss with that, and I know, I know people are, are freaking out, and I understand why, uh, about helmet bias and, and brand power, especially you know considering how pivotal Notre Dame's AD was in, in all of this. But a loss to Northern Illinois and a loss to either Virginia or Army or USC compared to or paired with the, their lacking win power should put them behind Ole Miss. It should, and most certainly should. Will it? I mean, I guess we'll have to see. But if you're comparing resumes, uh, one more loss for Notre Dame puts them behind Ole Miss, and and I would almost guarantee it. You want to root against LSU? Uh, one, because, well, you could say that this is one of those where it's just kind of the eye of the beholder, right? LSU has a path to make the SEC championship. And I know Ole Miss has a loss to LSU on the road. Um, LSU getting a fourth loss would make, Ole Miss's loss looked not as good. But LSU has a path to the SEC championship. And I do not think that a team that makes the SEC championship is getting left out or at least makes the debate kind of squirrely. And if they happen to get there and just by chance win the thing with three losses, they're obviously getting ahead of you. Uh, So I think that, one, Florida winning would help boost the allure of the Florida win and kind of balance out what um, that LSU loss could be maybe. But more importantly, there's a scenario in which LSU gets sent to Atlanta, and I don't like what that could do for Ole Miss. So I think you're actually rooting against LSU this weekend because of the aforementioned path to the SEC championship. I don't think you want LSU uh, making it there. Root against Missouri, mostly for Ole Miss to have um, that South Carolina win look really, really good. I think there is a 0% chance that Missouri um, can pass Ole Miss. It, I, I, unless Ole Miss loses. Uh, Missouri's resume will, will never, regardless of what happens, um, that they won't jump Ole Miss, I don't think. So root for South Carolina. They're actually two touchdown favorites in this game. Make that win for Ole Miss look better. Root against BYU. They're uh, only two and a half point favorites against Kansas this weekend at home. That's a fishy line. That should tell you something. Uh, you want to make sure that the Big 12 is a one-bid league. Because if BYU gets to the Big 12 championship at 12-0 and and they lose the Big 12 championship game to, say, Colorado, Colorado gets in the playoff because of automatic bid, most likely. And BYU would have a... that There would be an argument for BYU to make the playoff at 12-1 and over a 10-2 and Ole Miss. Would they deserve it? No. Would there be an argument for that? Yes. So... The Big 12 guaranteeing being a one-bid league is is obviously beneficial for Ole Miss. BYU losing would almost certainly guarantee, I think it would guarantee, that the Big 12 uh, would be a one-bid league if BYU uh, were to lose this weekend. Tennessee-Georgia is the most fascinating uh, debate because I, yesterday, was completely and totally on the uh, Ole Miss fans need to root for Georgia. Because I don't think that Georgia's passing Ole Miss. And a lot of other people don't either that cover the sport. Ole Miss beat the hell out of Georgia. It was not close. It was a domination, and it just happened. So I don't think, if you're if you're looking at it logically, that Georgia, even with a win over Tennessee, should pass Ole Miss. I don't think that they should. And a Tennessee loss would almost assuredly put Ole Miss, and Georgia too, but would put Ole Miss over Tennessee, making their, their position even safer. But there are people that are arguing, and I think that they're they're sound in this thought that you're remember we're we're talking about suits in a room that that they're humans and they all maybe not all 
I'm sure they try to do their jobs with integrity. But bias certainly can come into play here. Uh, both helmet bias and personal bias. Are, are, are you telling me that there's no way that you can see a committee in a room like this jumping Georgia over Ole Miss after a Tennessee win? I don't think it'll happen, but would I be surprised if it did, be, considering what we know about college football and what drives it and the the lack of transparency and the bad messaging and the bad rationale that the committee has had previously? Are we totally sure that they're going to do the right thing, which is to keep Ole Miss in front of Georgia? I think that's what they'll do. It's certainly what they should do. But I'm not totally convinced that they will do the right thing because they've displayed in the past that they just kind of make it up as they go along. So I'm kind of torn. I still think that you want Tennessee to lose this game. Uh, It would make the Ole Miss win over Georgia look better and it would jump them over Tennessee. Um, I, I still think that even though Haydad has kind of poisoned my mind about the the committee and uh, is corruption the right word? I don't know. Um, that they'll do the right thing here because that's the right thing. But if somebody's saying that you want Georgia to be quote unquote eliminated in, in Tennessee to win, I, I don't think you're illogical in, in that line of thinking either. What a bizarre situation uh, this has been. Either way, I still think that college football will take care of itself over the next three weeks. As long as Ole Miss takes care of business, they'll be in. But yeah, I think, you know, rooting against Texas, although that one might be a little controversial. You guys might disagree with me on that. Just keeping Texas where they are might be beneficial, but uh, you want Notre Dame to lose. Uh, You definitely want Notre Dame to lose. You definitely want BYU to lose before they get to the conference championship game making it a a one-bid league. I do think you want LSU out of SEC championship contention. You want South Carolina to win this weekend, bolster that win some, and uh, we'll we'll see how things shake out. I I think I know how they'll shake out, which is Ole Miss making the, the playoff should they win. So we'll see if they actually can do that. Either way, I appreciate you guys uh, being here. Again, sorry for no live stream tonight. Uh, just we'll be on the road uh, with the radio show uh, today. So we'll, um, we'll talk to you on Sunday. Thank you guys for tuning in and enjoy your weekend of relaxing football. Talk to you on Sunday.